Hi guys, welcome back to Golden Reviewer. So this is the Motorola Edge X30. So it's the world's first smartphone with Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 processor. And today we are going to do a full benchmark test of this phone and this SoC to see how the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 performs. We'll test the performance as well as the power consumption so we can know how efficient the chip is. And at the same time, we'll compare it to the Snapdragon 888 and the Snapdragon 870, which are its predecessors. And we'll see how much improvement Qualcomm has made in the past two generations. All right, so let's go to the test. So the first benchmark will be Geekbench. So this is to test the CPU performance. And as you can see, all the devices are cool and our room temperature is around 26 degrees C. All right, so this is a quick test and we can see that Qualcomm is indeed making steady progress. And between each generation, the single core performance improves by about 10%. While the multi-core performance improvement is uh, slightly less than 10%. So small, small improvements for CPU performance. Next, we'll use N22. So this is a more comprehensive benchmark that covers the CPU, the GPU, the storage, and everything, right? So uh, for this benchmark, we'll actually measure the temperature before and after the test to see how much um, the device heats up. And also for this one, we'll do it multiple times to see how well each device can sustain the performance over a long period of time. All right. So here, as you can see, between each test, I let the device cool down to room temperature so that the tests are fair and representative. And now let's go. Okay, here the test is finished and we see that the temperature of the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 device reached 45 degrees, which is pretty high, I will say. But of course, the score of 950 is also pretty amazing. But the Snapdragon 888 S21 Ultra only reached 38 to 39 degrees, which is much, much cooler than the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1, right? And the POCO F3 Snapdragon 870 is more or less similar at uh, 38 degrees. So here we see that the new Snapdragon 8 Gen 1, at least on the Moto X30, seems to be much hotter than its predecessors. And as for performance, it seems that the 8 Gen 1 is about 17% faster than Snapdragon 888 in N22 benchmark. Okay, now let's start the second and third round of testing and see how these devices perform under sustained load. Okay, so after the second run of N22, the 8 Gen 1 reached 50 degrees, which is super hot, while the Snapdragon 888 is only 41, while the Snapdragon 870 is around 42. Okay, so after the third run, I think the temperature more or less stabilized for the 8 Gen 1 at uh, 49 degrees, while the other devices are also just around 40 to 42 degrees. And as for the performance, the Snapdragon 888 and 8 Gen 1 both dropped around 100k of scores, while the 870 actually remained its peak performance, which is pretty amazing. And next, we'll do a 3D Mark stress test. So this is a 20 minutes, very, very stressful graphics intensive test. So this is to let us know the sustained graphics performance of these devices. Uh, this is pretty hard to believe, but after this test, the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 reached a whopping 61 degrees. And that 
is a little bit scary to be honest. It's the hottest device I've ever seen in all my tests. And trust me, you don't want to hold something at 60 degrees C in your hand. It will literally burn your hand, okay? So this is very, very scary and uh, I don't like it to be honest. On the other hand, the Snapdragon 888 and the 870 devices are much cooler at only around 40 or uh, 41, 42 degrees, which I think are much better for your health and safety. But then for performance, the 8 Gen 1 does not disappoint, right? Even after it throttles to 60% of its peak performance, it's still faster than the peak performance of the 888. So there you have a very huge jump in performance, but then the temperature is really unacceptable for me. And because it's so hot, we can expect it to consume more power. And you can see here that the 8 Gen 1 device actually use 15% of battery power, while the other two devices all use less than 10%. So there you have it, the Arduino 730, super fast, but super hot. And lastly, I want to show you some of my more rigorous and scientific tests where I test the CPU and GPU performance as well as the power consumption and I calculate the efficiency for you to determine which CPUs and GPUs are more efficient. So firstly, for the big core, we see that the 8 Gen 1 is indeed very, very fast. The Cortex-X 2 core clock at 3GHz in the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 is indeed the fastest single core we've ever seen in any Android SoC so far. And comparing to Snapdragon 888, the performance improvement is about 13% which I think is okay, it's not amazing, but it's a healthy generational improvement. However, what is not okay is the efficiency of the CPU core. Here we see that the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 actually becomes less efficient than both the Snapdragon 870 and 888. And the efficiency is also not good when comparing to other competitors from Google, Samsung, or MTK. And next, let's move on to the mid crop. The mid crop performance improvement is very, very minimum comparing to the Snapdragon 888. It's merely 3% faster than the mid crop in Snapdragon 888, and it is still slower than the higher clocked uh, A78 cores found in the Exynos 2100. So I think there must be something wrong with the new Cortex. Uh, a710 cross, right? Because they should be much faster, but in fact here we almost see no improvement. And you know what is even worse? The mid cross efficiency has suffered a lot. In fact, they are so incredibly inefficient that I just don't know what Qualcomm is doing here, right? What's wrong with you, Qualcomm? And these mid cores are supposed to be highly efficient and they should help with your battery life. But here we see some very inefficient mid cross, and I'm really worried about the battery life of Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 devices. So now let's move on to GPU. And for GPU, I have very good news for you. The Arduino 730 GPU in Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 is really, really fast. It's more than 40% faster than its predecessor, Snapdragon 888. And the Snapdragon GPU used to be like two generations behind the Apple SoC in terms of GPU performance. But now this is almost as fast as the Apple A15 five core GPU. And it's actually faster than the four core version of Apple A15. And that is really an incredible performance boost from the predecessor. And we really should give Qualcomm a round of applause for this. And the GPU, while being fast, is also pretty efficient. And uh, you can see here that the efficiency had a huge improvement from the Snapdragon 888 to 8 Gen 1 as well. And now it's almost as efficient as those of the best competitors out there, like the Apple A15, A14, and even the Snapdragon 865, which we know is really, really efficient. All right, guys. So that's all my tests I've done recently, and that's all I want to share with you. 
In conclusion, I think the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 had a great GPU but pretty mediocre CPU. The CPU is indeed a little bit faster, but the efficiency of the CPU is really a big problem. And to be honest, I'm not too optimistic about the performance of this SoC because it doesn't seem to be a well-balanced product to me, right? The GPU is so good, but the CPU is so bad. And eventually, the end result may not be very good because there is really very little uh, GPU-only use cases in real life. Almost all the time, you need the GPU and CPU to work together, whether you are playing a game or doing any other high load operations. You need the CPU to be fast and efficient in the first place. But anyway, I'll keep doing my tests and uh, I'll test other devices with the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 SoC as they come out. For example, the Mi 12, the Samsung S22. And uh, if my, you find my video helpful and interesting, please give me a thumb up and subscribe to my channel so that you don't miss my future updates. Okay, so thank you for watching and uh, see you next time.